Now, there are lots of subdisciplines within bioinformatics because bioinformatics is an interdisciplinary field because we need computer scientists, we need biologists, we need even economic economists right now, right? So we need, it's an interdisciplinary field. So there is a development of new algorithms and you have statistics because the minute you talk about big data, you need statistics because you want to see if this one single mutation is actually statistically significant for us to say, yes, this particular mutation causes that particular disease, right? And then we have an analysis and interpretation of various types of data, including nucleotides, amino acid mm -hmm. sequences, protein domains, and protein structures, and how do we get structures to function, and all of those things. And then the development and implementation of tools, because we can have, we can generate data, we can have computer scientists to develop tools to look at the data. And we also need, without tools, we cannot even mine and look at this data. That's what this course, you're gonna be learning about a lot of resources where there is data, but also you're gonna be using tools to be able to use, how do you use the data without tools, right? But we are going to be focusing just on this aspect of nucleotides, amino acid structures, and all of that for the first one week, right? Now, is informatics a new field? What do you think? I really love to ask this question to all my students and I get different kinds of answers. So I would like to know, of course, I wish I had some polling uh, set up so that we could have just polled. Now, what do you all think? Is bioinformatics a new field or not? You can just type yes or no answer into the chat and we'll see, we'll just wait for a second and see. Okay, no, bioinformatics is not a, is not a new field. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of new, no, 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 no. That is actually, no, okay. So bioinformatics is actually, you're right, is not a new field, right? So um, where do you think it was born? So bioinformatics is not a new field, um, but where was bioinformatics actually born? Who gave to this whole field of bioinformatics? Any guesses of which continent? When I went to school, it was seven continents. I don't know how many continents we have today. Uh, but how did Rosalind, uh, so you mean Rosalind Franklin. Okay, who, who, where was it born? Which continent was it born, you think? Any guesses of where bioinformatics was actually born? Asia, okay, that would be my guess as well. Um, X-ray crystallography, chromatography of DNA, USA, okay, probably in Europe, okay, so we're covering a lot of different continents here, we've covered Asia, you've covered Europe, uh, Asia is coming up a lot, Europe is coming up a lot, um, UK, yeah, sure, okay, so Cuba, okay, good guess. Actually, I'm going to take uh, someone who just actually uh, maybe one who made the protein atlas. Okay, we are actually coming really, really close. That is very true. So bioinformatics has actually, I spend a lot of time on the slide just because it's really fun to see how people think, right? Where it was born. Um, and um, yes, it was actually, I'm gonna get closer to, uh, I think it was Parimala um, or someone else said who, uh, USA, right? So I think whoever said USA, it is actually correct. So it was actually born in the U US. And uh, it was actually, I'm very proud to say that it, it was actually born in the universities I work in, at Georgetown University. And I think Parimala, you are actually right. It was actually the person who actually made the protein atlas. And who is that person who made the protein atlas? Any guesses? So uh, before I introduce, um, I have to give tribute to this person, Robert Ledley. Um, he was a faculty at Georgetown. He actually died uh, from Alzheimer's disease. Um, and he was the person who actually discovered a whole body CT scanner as well. And he actually published a paper in 1959 where he said, uh, he predicted that 50 years or 30, 40 years from when he wrote that paper, that we are going to be drowned in data and we are going to be dealing with biological data. He is the person who actually hired the person to Georgetown who actually gave birth to the entire field of bioinformatics. And she is actually officially now called 
the father and the mother of bioinformatics. She was declared the father and mother, mother of bioinformatics by David Lipman, who actually was the director of uh, NCBI, which we will talk about. So yes, those of you who said it's a lady, yes, it is a lady. And she was the one, and she actually came up with this Atlas of Protein Sequence and Structures. It was actually before my time as well in 1965, right? So this is, so in 1965, I don't even know how many years ago that was, um, where people used to actually get sequences published in a book. People used to sequence and send the sequence to Margaret Dayhoff. And she used to just publish this in a book and this book was the one that was actually uh, posted to all the scientists around the world. And that is how they used to get the protein sequences, right? So now, what were are her other seminal contributions? Yes, someone said, I think it was uh, Parimala who said, a protein atlas. And what, and she gave birth. At that point, she was a visionary. She's considered a visionary because people who are visionaries they already think what's coming 50 years down the road. She was the one who said, well, we are going to have a data explosion. So let's create what is called a database. So she was the person who first created the protein database. And if any of you are visiting Washington DC sometime and you visit Georgetown, I can take you to actually the servers and all the books that she published. We still have it because you know I used to hate history uh, in school, but now I love history. And so I have actually kept all her papers and everything else as everything was coming along. And she also came up with a single letter code for amino acids. I'm sure you all know what single letter amino is, acid letter code is, right? I'm sure. I don't want to quiz you on that. But is there any reason do you think that she came up with the single letter amino acid code? For example, glycine, GLY is G, right? Alanine, ALA is A, right? So mm -hmm. do you know why, yeah, efficiency, but other than the efficiency, of course, it's very efficient, right? Today we look at it and it's extremely efficient. But think in 1960s, why would she come up with a single letter amino acid letter code? What do you all think? Easier representation? Yes, that is definitely true. But other than that, you know, you all are in a generation where we have gigabytes of data in your phone. You're carrying gigabytes of data in your cell phone. So you can do this whole thing in a cell phone, right? Back then, yeah, it was lack of computation power. Back then they were talking about kilobytes of data or even megabytes of data. So they did not have in the supercomputers. So they wanted to make sure that they don't have enough space. So they had to actually convert that to single letter amino acid code. In fact, I learned all these stories from people who worked with her who are actually still at church now, right? Coding, storing information is efficient. That is correct. So now from that, where did we head, right? 1950s. And of course, you all know about Watson and Crick, right? Without Watson and Crick, we won't be here today. And then we have saying the sequencing. Without sequencer, we could not have sequenced anything, right? So insulin was the first protein. And then, of course, things started evolving. We started seeing a lot and lot more. <coughs> Excuse me. We started seeing, and then we started seeing polymerase chain reaction. And then, <clears throat> and then we started seeing uh, NCBI, and then we started seeing all of these different databases. And it was in 1991, the official term bioinformatics was coined and it came up in the literature. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think I'm screaming a lot here with out of excitement uh, because of all of you, right? So then we started seeing all of these tools that was developed and all of those things. And then we started developing and a lot, a lot of different things started. And you can actually pay attention to here where the whole genome project initiative was actually started in the eighties. <coughs> and then, um, and then the origin of bioinformatics, the first protein sequence reported was that of insulin 1956. It consisted of only one, uh, 51 amino acids. And then nearly a decade later, the first nucleic acid sequence was reported. Again, there is a faculty at Georgetown who, we, uh, who actually passed away two years ago, Jack Shurikian. Mm -hmm. He was the first person to actually sequence a tRNA um, when he was at Princeton. So 